or just an inflammatory response to the surgery. Okay, so what would you get infected with? Well, there's three most common, Staph aureus, and we talk about Staph aureus, Staph kind of a bacteria, aureus kind of in a subclass of that bacteria, it lives on the skin. So we all have Staph aureus on our skin. Staph epidermidis, same thing, we have it on our skin. And another unique one uh, that I'll talk about in one second, um, but when you look at Staph aureus, right, there's, there's MSSA, methicillin sensitive Staph aureus, which just means it's easy to kill with, with antibiotics, and MRSA, and that's harder to kill with antibiotics. You have to have more complicated or more severe, more uh, powerful antibiotics to be able to control MRSA. Now, again, key to note that we all probably have both of these bacteria on our skin living, not infecting us, just living on our skin, and they both can create infections uh, if we have an open wound. So we look at that, and then lastly, the one that's really kind of unique, uh, it's a board question in orthopedics when you're taking exams, is propionibacter acnes. And I didn't say that quite exactly right, but it's pretty close, propionibacter acnes. And so this is a type of bacteria that is, is unique uh, in shoulder surgery infections. And so it probably is not the most common, but it's unique. It's, it's, it's found much more common in shoulders than anywhere else, okay? And so those are the three. And so when we talk about, well, how do we know? So we look at the wound, right? We look at your, are you febrile? Again, you're gonna be febrile after surgery, which means, so when you get that data sheet that says after you leave surgery and it says, call us if, you're, if your fever is above 101.5 uh, Fahrenheit, that's what I use typically. It's pretty you pretty uniform throughout maybe a little bit different here and there the reason is because we know your 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 temperature is going to go up after surgery again this is another inflammatory marker if you have surgery if i cut your skin you are going to make a response to that a part of the response is going to be a fever so if you have a fever of 99 a fever of 100 a fever even a fever 100.5 that is going to be expected after surgery. Now, maybe not for weeks after surgery, but certainly for days after surgery. So that's why we give the caveat of 101.5 because we expect there's going to be an elevation. So that helps us determine if it's, if it's, if it's infection, if it's above that 101.5, that's not normal after shoulder surgery or any surgery for that matter. So that's important for you to know too. Again, certain markers go up, but they go up because of inflammation after surgery, not necessarily go up after after surgery because of an infection. And that's where having a, your surgeon, your doctor to go through it with you so you can better understand and make sense of those, those numbers. You know, if someone sent me numbers and said, hey, is this infected or not? Uh, I can't tell you without looking at all of it together and the symptoms too. So we look at lab work, we look at wound, we look at drains, we look at pain. And then maybe there's some areas in the body we would tap, which means we put a needle in, suck some fluid out, and in, in shoulders, it's probably not all that helpful. It may be somewhat helpful, but it would not be the first thing that we do. Unlike if you had a knee after surgery and it was really inflamed, really swollen, really painful, it would be much more uh, productive for us to take some fluid off there and check that fluid. Um, so what do you do with the fluid? So if you do do a, a, a tap or you do take the fluid off, you send it off to the lab and send it off to the lab too to have cell count. Uh, so kind of like a CBC of actually not the blood, but the fluid to see if there's increased a uh, certain kind of white blood cells, neutrophils or what we typically see after uh, with an infection. And we could look at those different cells and how does that fit and how many cells are there, right? We look at certain numbers of, of and when you, take the, when you take the fluid out, how many cells are there and what kind of cells are there. That's helped us determine whether this looks like an infection or not. Again, probably not really that helpful in shoulder surgery because oftentimes it's not possible to get fluid out. The other thing people talk about, what about a wound culture? So if you have an open wound and you take a swab and you swab it and then you send it off. This is my opinion and different physicians have different opinions on that. Just like I said in the very beginning, we have bacteria on our skin normally, right? That's just where, this, that's how they live. We live in a symbiotic relationship. Then, at that point, we're, they're not hurting us, but when it becomes an infection, then that's different. So for us, um, or for me, when I look at a swab from your skin, I don't know if, what, yeah, there's gonna be bacteria, there's gonna be something that's gonna grow, but I can't tell if that what's growing is really causing your infection or really causing an infection at all. So I think that's to have a very limited, very limited uh, use in determining shoulder infections. So that's kind of the first part of it. So there's three bacteria, the three most common bacteria, Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, and Propionibacter acnes. 
Uh, and so those are the three most common. The, the unique one is the appropriate actor. Uh, that's the one that's unusual anywhere else except for the shoulder. And it's rare anyway, unless you are a reverse total shoulder and that's still rare, but that's the most common type of shoulder surgery that's gonna get infection. So we're about a 1% chance of infection, probably less than that in an arthroscope or shoulder surgery for rotator cuff most of the time. Uh, so really rare, but certainly possible and something you need to know about. So I hope that answers kind of the questions of infection and how do you determine it. Next time we're talking about how to prevent it and then if you get it, how to take care of it. So I hope this helps. Please leave a like, please use any comments, please give me anything you want to hear about because it's important for me to make sure we're addressing the people out there in what they want to hear. So anyway, thanks uh, for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time for part two of infections around the shoulder. Thanks.